In this video, we're going to discuss how to find the surface area of the <coughs> objects which are obtained by rotating some curves around some axis, y or x. So previously, we were interested to find what is the volume of these objects, basically uh, how much water we can fill this up in, inside these objects. Today, we're going to discuss how to find the surface area of this kind of objects. Basically, if I would like to build this object from the metal or the plastic list, how much metal or, or plastic we need in order to build this kind of objects. So the formula of finding the surface area is like this. So we're going to discuss how to find the, this formula and how to apply this formula in the examples. So we're going to start with the surface area of the more basic <coughs> figures, objects. So let's say we're given a cylinder with the radius of the base R and with the length of the side or with the height L. So if I would like to find the surface area of, uh, of revolution, I need to cut this, for example, here. And if I cut this and if I open this, it's going to be a list. So the width of the list is going to be the same as the side of the cylinder and the height of the list is going to be the circumference of the base, right? So if you cut this and open this, you're going to get the height which is equal to the t pi r and the width of this rectangle is going to be the L which is the side of the cylinder. So that the area of revolution of the cylinder is equal to the t pi r multiplied to the L. So now discuss what is the area of revolution of the simple cone. So let's say we're given a cone uh, was the radius of the base R and was the length of the side L. In order to find the surface of revolution, we're going to use the same idea. We're going to cut this from somewhere and we can open this up and we're going to get this kind of object which can be considered as the part of the circle. Some circle with the radius L, right? So we know that the area of the circle, sector of the circle, was the radius L and was the length of the sector t by r is equal to the radius l multiplied to the length of the sector t by r divided to the t which is equal to the pi r l. So basically the surface of the revolution of the cone was the radius r and was the side l is equal to the pi r l. So for us it is important to find what is the surface area of this kind of bands. So the band is when we have the two circles on a base and on a top and this is connected with the lines. I would like to find what is the surface of revolution of this kind of band if I'm given the radius of the big circle, the radius of the small circle and the length between these two circles. In order to find this, I would like to apply the formula which we obtain for the surface of revolution of the cones. So first of all, I will make this <coughs> band a little bit bigger. So this is going to be a bigger band where the radius of the big circle is big R, the radius of the small circle is small r, and the L is going to be the length of the band, and small l is going to be the length of the side of this cone, small cone. So using the formula which we obtained before, the surface revolution of the big cone, it's going to be the radius of the base multiplied to the side, the length of the side, which is going to be sum of these two L's, multiplied to the pi. So the surface of revolution of the small cone, it's going to be the radius of the base multiplied to the side, the length of the side, multiplied to the pi. So if I would like to find the surface of revolution of the band only, I need to subtract the, radius, the surface of the big cone minus the <coughs> surface of the small cone. So the radius of the band is going to be big uh, surface area minus the small surface area. And if I simplify this formula, if I open up the brackets and if I take out the pi out of the brackets, so this here should be pi only. And if I take out the simplify this, I will get this kind of formula. So now I would like to simplify this by substituting this term was another one. In order to do this, I'm, I'm going to use the similar triangles. So here, if I look to the inside this cone, I see the two triangles which are similar. The first one is with the sides r and the sum of these two l's, and the second one is small r and with small l. So we know that for the similar triangles, the ratio of the two sides are equal. So that is why I would like to find the ratio of the hypotenuses of the triangle to this side. So the hypotenuses to this side 
small l divided as a small r, it's going to the hypotenuses of the big triangle, because which is the sum of the l's, divided as a big R. That they are equal. If I give the common denominator, I will get this equation. If I put this term to the left, I can find that the L multiplied to the difference of the radiuses is equal to the small radius multiplied to the L, and I'm going to substitute this term with the RL from here. So if I substitute this, I'm going to get this term. If I take out the L from the brackets, and if I write down the R plus R over T, this is going to be the average radius, right? So the radius in the middle of the <coughs> band. So the area of the band can be read, can be found using this formula. So T pi R L, so where L is going to be the length of the side of the band, and R is going to be the radius in the middle of the two circles, right? Average radius of the two circles. So now, let's go to the idea of finding the surface of revolution of the arbitrary objects. So let's say we're given some curve with some function, y is equal to the f of x. I would like to rotate this around the x-axis, and I would like to find that surface of revolution. So the idea would be, I can approximately find this by splitting this jar, in our case, into the many small bands. And by summing the surface areas of the bands, I can find the surface area of this jar. So <coughs> the surface area of each jar can be found by f multiplying the radius to the 2 pi multiplied to the length of the side. Right? So the radius, in this case, if I choose to make the band at some point xi, the radius of this band is going to be the height of this point, right? Or basically the y coordinate of this point, which can be found by substituting this x to the function of the curve. And the L can be found using the formula for the arc lengths in these two points. If I substitute everything, I'm going to get this formula. So this is going to be the radius of the band at this point xi, and this is going to be the length of the band at this point xi. So, <laughs> if I would like to increase um, the number of the bands, I will get more precise answer for the surface of this jar, of this object. Uh, if I take the limit when n goes to the infinity, this formula can be substituted with the integration of the t pi multiplied to the f of x multiplied to the square root of 1 plus f prime of x in the square because of the definition of the definite integral. So this is the formula to find the surface of revolution. So let's apply this to, to like let's learn how to use this in order to find the surface areas. So we're going to apply this for the <coughs> for the spheres. So we know that the surface of, surface of sphere is equal to the 4 pi r squared. So let's like check it for this sphere was the radius t. So I can obtain the sphere with the radius t by rotating the equation of the half a circle around the x-axis, right? So the equation of the upper half of the circle is equal to the 4 minus x squared. I can obtain this by rotating this curve around the x-axis. So if I would like to find the surface area of the sphere, I just need to put this formula, put this function to the formula. So here I need to know the derivative of the f as well. So if the f of x is equal to the 4 minus x squared, its derivative is equal to the 1 over t multiplied to the square root of 4 minus x squared, multiplied to the minus tx, which is the derivative of the uh, 4 minus x squared, according to the chain rule, and I can find the f prime of x in this form. So now if I would like to calculate the surface area, I just need to substitute the f prime to here, and f to here, and simplify everything and integrate this. So if I substitute there everything, I will get this term. So let's give the common denominator. If I give the common denominator, it's going to be 4 minus x squared plus x squared. I can eliminate the x's, and I will have just the square root of 4, which is t. And this term is going to be canceled with this term. And at the end, I will get the 4 pi dx. So after the integration, I can get the answer, which is 16 pi, which corresponds to the formula of the surface of the sphere, which is 4 pi r squared. So if the r is equal to the t, it's going to be 16 pi.